man's haircut. Your presenter today is Greg Zorian. Greg is a third generation barber with more than 20 years of experience behind the chair and as an educator. He has provided over 100,000 haircuts personally and has trained thousands of barbers and cosmetologists in the art of men's haircutting and barbering. His work has been featured in Milady's Standard Professional Barbering textbook and DVD series and in magazines including Modern Salon, First Chair, Modern Salon Learning, and Travel and Leisure. He was placed second in Four Seasons magazine list of the top five men's haircuts in the world. Greg's website, howtocuthair.tv, provides continuing education for barbers and cosmetologists with streaming video lessons. He also has a growing library of barbering and men's haircutting and shaving DVDs to help students and industry professionals hone their skills and grow their clientele. Today's presentation is actually going to include a lot of the video that Greg has recorded. Um, so, excuse me. I'm not message popped up there. Close that out. Um, so Greg will actually be sharing a lot of the video today. Since that video does require a lot of bandwidth, um, we may have technical issues, so please bear with us. We've practiced this and hope that there won't be any, but just in case, we appreciate your patience. Without further ado, Greg, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Well, welcome. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for the great introduction. You're welcome. Take it away. I can see your PowerPoint. Okay. Just trying to get it to full screen here. There we go. Okay. Well, as Jenny said, I'll repeat a few of the things that uh, Jenny said. Um, I appreciate the great introduction. Again, um, I'm a third generation barber. Um, I live in upstate New York, and I've been in the business since I uh, basically since I graduated high school. I served in a I uh, served in apprenticeship under my father, and um, it was uh, really interesting because um, you know all you technicians out there will understand how difficult um, you know scissor cutting and scissor over comb and a lot of these short men's haircuts today are. I was not allowed to touch a clipper until I could do every haircut right down to a flat top with a scissor over comb. So I had a pretty pretty intense pretty intense training and then shortly there there after that training with my father, I trained with one of the top clipper companies, um, their their top their top person on clipper cutting as well. So I, I, I feel I was very fortunate that I had a great education early on and it saved me a lot of uh, trial and error. And that was, you know, pretty much my late teens, early twenties, so I was very fortunate. So as you can see here on the left, I have a picture of my uh, grandfather. This picture is actually from the night when we stored. It's <clears throat> from the 1930s. Um, he was a barber for 50 years. And the two pictures on our right are the current barber shops that we have now. Uh, these photos are also featured in the Malady uh, Barbering textbooks, which we've been very fortunate to be featured in the last two editions of the textbook. Um, so as you can see, we, we have uh, skilled barber shops, and we employ about 20 barbers all together and, uh, in, in the two locations, and we service between 800 and 1,000 uh, men and boys uh, per week uh, in these two shops. So today's presentation is, all, is going to be all about making um, hair cutting, men's hair cutting uh, simple for you. In other words, simplifying. Um, traditionally tough techniques, you know, especially fade or taper haircuts. I mean, you could substitute the word taper for fade. Uh, fade doesn't always necessarily mean bald on the side. It could be a business cut with a half inch taper, which is equivalent to, say, a number four attachment. So um, so we're going to go over a few of those different things today. But um, you know, how, how to really simplify your haircuts, men's haircuts. Um, number one, uh, I would like to teach you today how to save time. And by saving time, I don't mean speeding up and cutting faster. I'm going to show you ways to increase your efficiency, meaning that um, what I do, and you'll actually see in the videos, my hand speed actually is not fast. You may see that you may see my scissor opening and closing fast, but the actual hand speed itself of the comb controlling the hair being cut is not fast. Um, and I do. And the idea is that if you do every step right the first time, you don't have to do it again. And that's where that's where the uh, efficiency comes in. 
And that brings me to my next point, which is cutting with the system. <clears throat> so I have a, a system that I cut with that I do the same thing pretty much every time. And when you're doing the same thing every time, you obviously you build good, good habits as long as you're working with a good system, and then your results are going to be consistent. And most importantly, which we all care about as much as we're passionate and love what we do, um, we can make more money, which is always, always a good thing. So um, just a little bit before we get into the videos, I want to go over some, some basic, some of the basics. There are two, two shapes of men's haircuts. One is square, and I put a picture of a flat top up so you can really understand you know, what a square shape is. And if you think of today's uh, business cuts and pompadours and a lot of the popular haircuts, it's, it's pretty much the same shape, or not pretty much, it is the same shape as a flat top. If you were to stand the hair, pull the hair straight up and straight out uh, at 90 degrees, it should be um, cut with the corners left. Um, on the sides and in the back, so there's enough weight in the corners for the hair to, to do what we want it to do. Uh, the haircut on the right is um, called a Princeton or an Ivy League haircut. This is more of a contoured shaped haircut, which means if the, hair, uh, the haircut actually follows the contour of the shape of the head. So there is no square shape, it's just whatever the shape of the head is, that's what we follow. And um, this particular haircut has been very popular <clears throat> since the 1940s you know, and 50s, and um, we've been doing a lot more since the release of uh, the James, the newest James Bond movie. I believe it was uh, last year, a year and a half ago. If any of you have seen that, um, this is a, this is the exact haircut that uh, Daniel Craig had in the, the James Bond movie. So another thing that I'll be talking about today is the sections of the head. So I, I like to break it down, and again, I like to make everything as simple as possible. So I have a view from the profile and a view from the back. Um, so when I'm cutting, uh, the process in my mind and the process when I teach is just these five sections. And there's some very complicated technical terms out there, and, and I like to simplify them as easy as possible. So. I don't think I could have made them any simpler than this, so I just refer to any area above the occipital area as the top. Uh, the occipital area itself, I'm sorry, um, parietal area. Anything above the parietal area is the top, and, and in the back, above the occipital area, it's a, the occipital area is in the, um, in the back. Um, so anything at the round of the head section is the parietal area. Uh, the sides in the back section, if you were to measure out one to two finger width above the ear, just below where the head rounds, that's what I consider the sides and back section. And then the two finger width around the outline of the haircut is the semi-finish. So basically, we're really only dealing with four sections. So if we do our job correctly, the finish is actually just touching up the outline of the haircut. It's pretty much already going to be done. So if you do your job, correctly in those first four sections, the finish is going to take care of itself. So we have four basic hair cutting techniques that you're going to see in the videos today. The first one is scissor over fingers, which is simply as it sounds, picking the hair up and cutting it over your fingers. The next one is scissor over comb, which is picking the hair up with a comb and cutting it with your scissor over your comb. The third one is picking the hair up with your comb and cutting it with your clipper over the comb. And the last one is a term I just came up with, which is called blade on skin, which is actually putting a clipper blade, clipper attachment, scissor, or a razor directly on the skin. It can sometimes be referred to as freehand cutting. Um, but again, I can make the sound as simple and self-explanatory as possible. So now we'll get into uh, some of the videos. This is, this is the first technique I want to show you. This is a video still from one of my videos, which gives you a good um, picture of what scissor over fingers is. And uh, let's go ahead and start the first video. So this is just a basic boy's haircut. <clears throat> and as I said before, um, you know, I like to cut with an, um, uh, efficiently. So I, I like to start on the top section. So what I do is I pick the hair up at 90 degrees. And I, uh, I don't cut past my center knuckle. And I, I like to use the traveling guide. That way, I always have the previous guide in my fingers. And I start with the center section, and then you have to be very careful in the back when you're near the crown, 
you don't want to cut too far back where that crown is going to stick up. So you want to leave enough hair in the crown where it will lay down. So that again, that um, brings in the uh, square shaped haircut that I was what I was talking about. So after you do your center section, you can take a section to either the left or the right side, and you'll see your center guide in the middle of your finger. And what I like to do is line up that guide with my center knuckle, or at least I try to, and that's a good way to avoid cutting past your center knuckle. Again, I'm using a traveling guide. You always want to see your previous guide in your fingers. So next up here, we all we're, we're still <coughs> excuse me, we're still cutting scissor over comb. Now we're working in the round of the head section. And if you can see that short hair um, where my, my middle knuckle is, my middle finger, I've lined up the top guide with that middle knuckle so I can't cut past the middle knuckle. My fingers are parallel to the side of the head now, creating a square shape, and my pinky is balancing my hand on the head. So I have good tension on the hair, and the hair is going to be cut evenly. And I'm also using a traveling guide. That way, I always see my previous guide in my comb, and I'm not, um, and I'm not taking extra time by taking small, tiny sections. So by never letting the hair go and using a traveling guide, you're going to be very efficient, and you're going to save time. Okay, and that brings us to our next technique, which is scissor over comb. I know you're all probably thinking, wow, that's a big scissor. Um, that's an 8-inch uh, barbering shear. I would suggest uh, you don't have to go crazy and use an 8-inch shear. I work my way up to that. I would suggest using at least a 6 to a 7-inch uh, shear for your scissor over comb. That way you cover a lot more ground. So here we go with our scissor over comb video. So as I'm pointing, as I'm pointing there, I'm point, you can see your guide that you want to blend to. So instead of starting on the sides and the back and not having a guide to blend to, now you can see as as I work that comb through the hair, at, at some point there when I stop cutting, I'm running out of hair to cut. So I'm blending right into my guide, and then we have a nice blend there. I never left any line of demarcation. I like to start on the right-hand side. And that way, my previous guide is always in the front of the comb. So if you look very closely in the front of the comb, you see some short hair there. And that's what I'm using as my guide. Now, as I work my way around the back, I'm going to dip down a little bit lower to allow for the crown to be a little longer so it doesn't stick up. I'm sure any of you that are cutting men's hair, you're, you're used to that crown sticking up. You're used to that crown area there. And you know, once you, we've all done it, once you cut it too short and it sticks up, no amount of gel in the world is going gonna, is gonna to keep it down. So we have to be very careful and cognizant of, of, the, uh, of the crown area. So that brings us to our next technique, which is clipper over comb. Now, clipper over comb can be done on the sides. And it can also be done, as you can see, on the left-hand side on the top of the head. Um, so when you're, when you're working with short hair, it's much more efficient to cut with clipper over comb or scissor over comb for that matter on the top and picking it up with your fingers. If any of you are winding up with small lines in your in your hair haircuts on top, um, it's because the hair is too short and when you pick it up with your fingers your sections are too wide. So as we look at when we start with the clipper over comb video here, when you see me actually cutting clipper over comb, you'll see how slow that comb moves and that means I'm taking a lot of sections and the more sections you take the more accurate your work is going to be. So what I'm what I'm discussing here is not to cut too, not to cut into the uh, rece recession area with the um, with the clipper over comb. So you want to make sure as we're working our way up, as you can tell, the comb is parallel to the side of the head, not parallel to the contour of the head. So 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 by making it parallel to the side of the head, that front part of the comb is not digging into the the bang or the uh, front area, so we're not going to cut a hole there. So I'm using a large comb, and I'm demonstrating the correct way to hold it so my wrist doesn't move when I comb the hair down. You know, if you're holding your comb the second way, um, what, what winds up happening is you wind up twisting and flicking the hair around, and it's not all in an even position when you're when you're cutting it. 
So then if it's not an even position when you're cutting it, your cut is not going to be even. So again, with this haircut, what you didn't see in this video was me cut the top first. So you could see where I was blending to. Now here we have um, a, another Princeton haircut. This is not, not obviously not the uh, first haircut I showed you. This was on a younger gentleman. Another video from um, my website. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm showing you how to blend that front into uh, the top area. So I always like to leave the front to the last, and then I over direct the front all the way to the shorter hairs in the back, and just one cut across the comb, as you can see, blends it in. So we pull it all the, all the way back so you can see the previous guy behind it in the comb, and then when you cut across, then it's all even. And if you want it shorter in the front, you would keep doing this step and not over direct the hair back as far. And that's how you would wind up with it shorter in the front. So with men's cutting, as with women's cutting, believe it or not, there are a lot of um, there is a lot of times when you're going to be over directing the over directing the hair. So you definitely have to be aware of the head shape that you're working with and the hairstyle. So this brings me to blade on skin. I have two samples here. Again, as I said before, blade on skin could mean many things. I just think of it as I'm taking either a clipper blade or a clipper with an attachment. Could be a scissor, could be a razor, and it's go it's coming in direct contact with the skin. So let me give you a few examples. So we're going to start out with a basic temple taper or temple fade, and I like to start, as I said, on the top section and work from the top down instead of making my line and blending it out. When you work from the top down, you're removing all the bulk first or all the heavy weight first, so you're not going to have an extreme line, and in a lot of cases, you're not going to have any line to blend out. So again, that's, that's where my speed comes in, not working faster, but working smarter. So in this case, I'm using a very powerful detachable blade clipper, rotary motor clipper, with the largest blade. That's a three and three quarter blade, which leaves the hair at half an inch in length. And you can see how I don't have to keep going over in different directions as you do with a uh, plastic attachment on an adjustable clipper. So here's another technique that gives people a lot of trouble is tapering the neckline. So what I like to do is I like to start out with the larger, and I'm using an adjustable clipper in this case, which is a medium-sized clipper with a lever on the side. And I'm starting out with a, um, I believe that's a, an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch attachment. And I work from longer to shorter. <clears throat> so I'll start with a longer attachment, and then I'll take that off and put a smaller attachment on. Or I'll close the lever down. But I can also get, with the same attachment on an adjustable clipper, I can get you know, four to five different sizes out of it. So you can see, as I'm working from longer to shorter, that neckline is just kind of fading out or disappearing. So instead of going in first and making a line with a trimmer, a distinct line, and giving yourself a difficult time blending it out, this way we can just, we'll just fade it out and not have to work very hard. So now front hair lines. This is something that you, know, you always want to ask your customer with short hair. Some like them lined off, some don't. So you always want to ask. And you, don't, and you want to be careful not to cut off the natural hairline. So you just want to gently press with the clipper. Well, these clippers are very sharp, so they cut very well. You don't have to press too hard. If you press too hard, you wind up with uh, <clears throat> excuse me, skin abrasions, or you're in danger of possibly giving somebody a little bit of a neck. So you can see how lightly I'm holding that clipper in my hand and how gently I'm touching the forehead, and it's really making a nice straight line. Okay, so how to fade a fish? Oh, sure. We have a question. Uh, so we have a question from the audience. Do you suggest blades on the BRG clipper instead of guards for close cutting? Uh, yes, <clears throat> and that that is a BGRC clipper. And and in the next the next round of videos, you're going to see uh, an MVP clipper, which I like even better. It's lighter and quieter, but it's also a detachable rotary rotary motor. But I do suggest. I do suggest using different blade sizes versus using a blade and putting a plastic attachment over a blade. It works much easier.
Did you have any other questions before I go into the next slide? No, nope, that was the only question so far. Okay. Okay, so now I want to talk a little bit about how to fade efficiently. And, and you could substitute the word fade. Again, there's a stigmatism with fade. Everybody thinks of fade, where a lot of people think of fade has to be this you know, hour and a half long piece of artwork where you're going from skin to hair on top, you know, with no line, and, and that's, that's not the case. That's, that's, that's a bald fade or a skin fade. It's only one haircut. Um, the, the word fade here in the title could be substituted with blending, how to blend efficiently, how to taper efficiently, um, how to blend out lines efficiently. So you can, you can um, use these next four uh, these next four points in any of your haircuts, whether it's a skin fade or whether it's a business cut, or even if it's a clipper or scissor over comb cut where you're not going that short on the sides, these principles apply. So I always cut the top first unless somebody is coming to me every one, one to two weeks. Then there's not going to be a lot of hair on top that you're fighting with. If you don't cut the top first and you go right into the sides first, you're going to lose sight of the cutting blade. So when you lose sight of the cutting blade, you're in danger of cutting up too high on the sides, and you're going to leave that heavy weight line or that heavy mushroom line. So after you cut the top, what you want to do is create your guide. Now, if, we go, if you think back to the, the, um, the section where we did the, the uh, different sections of the head, if you think back to the round of the head section in the parietal area, so this is a lot of times where your guide's going to be. So you can go with a clipper over comb or a scissor over comb technique, give yourself a guide, remove enough hair, blend that to the top. So now, now when you go in to the next step, fade to your guide, but you do not cut the guide, you have, um, you have something that you're cutting to. So now whether you're going to do scissor over comb, clipper over comb, put an attachment on a blade, um, you're, you're going to have, you're, going to be, you're never going to lose sight of your cutting blade, so you're not going to be in danger of going too high. So that's why I have a parenthesis there, don't cut your guide. So if you don't cut your guide, you're not going to go too high. So, and if you do all this properly, you're going to have very little, if any, blending work to do. So that's why I say touch up the blend if necessary. In a lot of cases, believe it or not, we are taking the most difficult step, which is blending, completely out of the haircut or minimizing it to the point that uh, you shouldn't have any stress or raise anxiety level of it. So here we go. On uh, uh, the next four slides, I'm going to demonstrate with a short video on exactly what I mean for each of those. So number one, let's cut the top first. So this is a basic uh, business cut. And what we're going to do here is your, uh, one of our most common haircuts, side part haircut, layered on the top, and a half inch taper on the side, which is equivalent to a three and three quarter blade with the metal system or uh, number four, usually on the plastic attachments, or a half inch. I'm using a large clipper comb, and I'm using a scissor over comb technique on top. Now you can see there where I'm showing, I want the hair longer in the front, and I want it longer in the crown. This was the first time I cut this person's hair, so I wanted to make sure that I combed through all the hair and checked what was done before, so I could make sure that you know I, I, I give him my haircut. So, what I'm going to do there is use that front as a guide so I don't cut the front any shorter and then just use my scissor over comb technique starting with creating a center guide first. So it's just like one of the other ones where I picked the hair up in the center first and then went to off onto each side. So there I am finishing the back of the center guide and then after that and I'm coming from the side instead of from the front because the hair grows that way, so it's easier to pick up and it feeds into the comb better when you cut it against the grain. So now I'm cutting the right side using the center as my guide, and I'm over-directing it past the recession. You want to make sure you over-direct it at least two, if not past the recession, otherwise you're going to cut a hole in the recession. So we want to leave it thicker towards the front. So we're creating a fuller hairline. So here's the important, or well, they're all important, but here's the important section which I find a lot of people um, have trouble understanding. We want to create our guide. So we want to create a guide around the parietal ridge 
and just above or through the middle, depending on where the, the customer's occipital bone is. So, and that's going to serve as our guide for when we go in with our clippers. You can see this customer has a little bit of a receding hairline, so we have to be careful in that front right corner. So we're going to have to angle that comb out a little bit. And you can either use a, a scissor over finger technique, or you can use a scissor, or you can use a scissor over comb technique. Whatever you feel more comfortable with. The only thing that I suggest is if you are going to use a scissor over comb technique, you want to make sure that the hair is not too short. If the hair is too short, you're going to wind up leaving scissor marks. So again, I'm lining, I'm lining up my previous guide from the top with my center knuckle, so that way I cannot cut past my. There's no reason to cut past my center knuckle and cut myself. And then I don't want to get too close to the recession in the front. So I'm using a traveling guide so I can see my previous guide. And then when I get to the recession, I'm going to stop. So that way, our guide blends right in with the length of our bangs. So your fade should never be higher than your bang length. Otherwise, the the hairstyle or the haircut will be out of proportion. So now we're in the back and we're going to work our way around the crown here. And we're going to use a scissor over comb technique. So we're going to use that same larger comb that we used on top. And we're just going to comb up and we're going to create and we're going to create a guide. We're just going to remove a good amount of hair and blend it into the top section. I suggest using a white comb. Uh, I know I have a dark comb there, so it can be hard to see. I suggest using a white comb with darker hair. I should be using a, uh, my, my lighter color comb there so you can see it better. So you can see when I pull it, when, when we pull it out there, we use the, uh, we use the, the guide from the top so we didn't cut the crown too short. So that comb is moving really slow. Even though my scissors open and closing fast, that comb is moving really slow. Okay, so now we're going to fade to the guide, but we're not going to cut our guide. So again, I'm using my detachable blade clipper. That's a three and three quarter blade on there, which is a half inch blade. And again, as I said, this is the most common, um, one of the more common haircuts, call it the business cut or the banker's cut or something like that. Uh, I think on my website I call it the attorney cut. We're in, area, we're in an area near a, um, uh, a law school, so we, have, we do a lot of attorneys, and it just seems like pretty much every one of them gets this haircut. So there I am with the comb I just showed you about an inch below where the guide is, which you can see. You want to start to bevel, bevel that clipper away so we don't leave a line. So that nice and slow, we bevel the clipper away. Now the advantage with these metal blades as you can see how the blade is cutting as I'm pulling away from the head. So because of that, when I finish, there's very little, if any, blending work to be done. We're not leaving the heavy weight line. And as I said before, I never lose sight of those cutting teeth. So I don't run the risk of cutting too high. Cutting too high. Once you cut too high, it's all over with. So And it throws off the whole balance of the haircut. So, so when we come back, we might have a little bit of blending work, work to do. And again, with these metal blades, a point you see me holding the ear down with my finger, um, make sure you hold that ear out of the way, because the metal blades are very sharp. There is no plastic uh, attachment over the top of it to protect the ear. If you catch the back of the ear with those metal blades, it'll, it'll, it'll cut the ear every time. So, so you can see as I work my way up, it guides me. There's no hair left to cut. I take an imaginary line straight up in the air with the clipper. And then we, we have very little, if any, blending left to do. OK, now we're just going to, I'm just going to show you a little bit of the touch-up part, or the blending. So now, as before, with most, with most of, of your haircuts, or most of the haircuts that I see, the blending, the blending consists of you know, cut the sides, cut the top, and then remove this big mushroom or this big heavy weight line around the edges. Now we don't have that. Now you can barely see. You can barely. You can barely see a, a heavy line or a line of demarcation around the edges. So what I'm using there is um, a one and a half blade. 
And what that is is that I use that to, to cut and to blend at the same time. If you look closely, the heel of the blade is not touching the comb. The farther away the heel of the blade is from that comb, the more blending I'm doing. The closer the heel of the blade is to that comb, the more cutting I'm doing. So I'm doing very little cutting, mostly blending. If I was, again, if I was to lay that heel of the blade flat on the comb, I would be doing quite a bit of cut, cutting length. So we have a nice blend there, and uh, that clipper blade is also long enough that we can uh, use it for the sideburns, and I also use it to start the taper on the back. So you can see here in the back how we dip down a little bit to allow for the crown. We don't want the crown sticking up. First thing that can happen is someone walking out of a barber shop or a hair salon with their crown sticking up. So it looks like my clipper, it looks like I might be cutting a little fast, but if you look at the speed of the comb, the comb is moving extremely slow, so that means I'm taking a lot of sections. So the more sections you take, the more accurate your work is going to be. The less sections you take, the more lines you're going to see in your work. So here we have uh, 2014s and pretty much 2013 also the most popular men's hairstyles. So we have a pompadour and we have a modern side part. So when I see this, the pompadour haircut, I think of Bruno Mars at um, you know, the halftime show at the Super Bowl or at the Grammys. You know, he had a really cool looking pompadour. And then the modern side part is, is just, a, a, just a, a normal side part haircut with the part cut in. and can be styled in many different variations. Um, so I would say the majority of the pictures I see on either Instagram or Facebook or or, or harebrained or any of the other social networking sites, you know, is some variation of these two haircuts. So I'm just going to show you a little bit of the popular haircut first and how we uh, how we accomplish that. Um, this is a square shaped haircut, and uh, you can see this gentleman's hair. His hair pretty much grows straight forward, which makes it a little bit more difficult, and there's a little more styling involved at the end because his hair does grow straight forward. But we have to make sure that we over-direct that front so the hair is left longer towards the front. So what I do is I pick a point by the ear, whether it be the front, mid, or back of the ear, depending on how long I want the top to be, and I over-direct the hair back to that point. If you notice, my fingers are parallel to the floor. I shouldn't be cutting past my center knuckle. And I'm using a traveling guide, so I can always see the previous guide in my comb. My pinky is balancing my hand on the head form, so that's giving me the proper tension on the hair. So when I cut the top, I'll get the center section like that, and then I'll get uh, a section on each side, the left side and the right side. The video seems to be playing a little bit slow here. Um, I apologize. So on the sides here, what I want to do is I cut the top. So now we're going to cut. Basically, this is the same same thing that we, we the same steps that we just uh, just showed you on the last on the last haircut. Except here, I want to comb the bangs out of the way, the bangs or the front, however you want to refer to them. And then I'm going to use a scissor over comb technique all the way around the head to remove to remove all to remove to remove the weight. So I said before, don't be afraid by the long shears. You don't have to use an eight-inch shear. Um, I do suggest at least a six or a six and a half, preferably a seven. And as I'm supposed to be doing, I'm using a light-colored comb or a white comb on dark hair. So what I'm doing here is preparing the hair for when I go in with the clipper around the edges. I could have used a scissor over comb technique there, but the hair was a little short, and I would have to take a lot of tiny sections. As you can see by how slow that comb moves when I, when I do the scissor over comb or when I do clipper over comb here, how slow that comb moves is very difficult to take that many sections picking it up with your, picking it up with your fingers. So this is the blending step. That's my one and a half blade. I have the tip of the blade. I'm 
using the tip of the blade versus the heel of the blade. And while I have that blade on there, I can start to taper around the outline of the haircut. I apologize. For some reason, this, this video is playing very slow. I'm going to jump to the next slide to the modern side part. The video is not playing right. We'll see if we have some better luck with this video. These videos are a little longer. OK, that's, that's better. OK, so this particular haircut, we have a side part haircut. Which is which is uh, similar to um, again. There are so many versions. Of, there are so many variations to this haircut. So we're going to do the same steps that we did with the um, previous haircut, the pompadour, and the haircut before that, where I broke it down into the four short videos. Um, I cut the top already here, and you should be able to see a guide where I'm blending to. I'm using a three and a half blade, which is actually three eighths of an inch, so the hair is going to be cut shorter. And you can see when I take that imaginary line straight up in the air. And I apologize for the video playing slow. Now with this color hair, it's very difficult to, bl to blend to begin with. So I have done no blending whatsoever. So just by cutting the top first and working on that rounded the head section and creating my guide, fading to my guide but not cutting into my guide, we have very little blending to do. So there is some necessary. But even even if you didn't do any blending, you're still gonna you would still be farther ahead than 80, 85 percent of the work being done out there with the people that are leaving a big heavy weight line first. It's just so much harder to blend out once you make that once you make that line. And again, as I said before, you're in danger of if you can't see the cutting blade, you're in danger of cutting too high. So when we start on the bottom there, you can't see the cutting blade, but then when it reappears, that's just meeting your that just means you're meeting your guide. So for this particular haircut, I worked down to a one and a half blade around the edges, which is one eighth of an inch. Right now I believe I have a two blade on there, so I like to work down one blade size at a time. I don't like to um I don't like to start from the bottom up. Uh, I, I don't like to skip blades because sometimes that can create weight lines. Um, once you're, if you're experienced enough and been doing enough haircuts, it's okay to it's okay to skip blades. You can get away with it. But if this technique is new to you, I wouldn't recommend uh, skipping blades. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take that that eighth of an inch blade, which is also our blending blade. We're going to start our taper around the outline of the haircut. And while we're doing that, we're also going to, as we're doing on the previous haircuts, we're also going to touch up the blend area. So this goes back to what I was talking about with deficiency. So here we're doing two steps at once. We're starting our taper around the outline of the haircut, and we're also blending. So we're doing two things in the same area. So we don't have to keep going back on it. And what I like to do is I like to keep my feet planted in one spot and just turn the chair. So as you can see there, again, I'm using the tip of the one and a half plate. And it just requires a little bit of, just a little bit of blending. So this works much better than going in there with blending shears because blending shears have a tendency to really, uh, can really chop up the hair. And you might not notice it so much when you're done with the haircut, but as the haircut is growing out, you wind up with little pieces uh, sticking out. So here what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go in and, um, and cut that line in. So I always either let your customer comb their hair and part it where they want it, or make really sure they have the hair parted exactly where they want it. So, so you don't, because um, once you commit and make that line, there's no turning back. So what I'm doing is I'm locking that hair into place with my comb. So it's out of the way. I'm using the base of my comb as a guide. And I'm going in with the clipper. And I'm, I'm touching. I'm not wiggling it back and forth. I'm just touching it. Generally, you don't want that line wider than the width of the blade. So 
All you need to do is hold, is hold the clipper there for uh, a split second, let, let the blade go back and forth a few times and cut. Let it work, let it do its job. And it's always good to comb the loose hairs out of the way. And then I generally, depending on how far back you, how far back the pivot or the crown is, I generally go back to the crown. So I ask the customer first. Some have a preference and only get, want, want to go halfway or two thirds of the way, but I generally I generally bring it back to the uh, to the crown. Okay, so then once we do that, I'm using a dry paste and we're going to foam it into place. And as you can see on the sides there, there's there's no, no, no line of demarcation. So we start on the top and we work our way down. We, cr we create a guide. We, we fade to our guide. We don't cut our guide. And then we do a little bit of touch up if necessary. And then for this particular style, the customer, he wanted to you, know, you could use a, a wide tooth dent brush or a wide tooth comb. You could use your fingers. This is the particular style he wanted to go with. So there we have a good shot of the of the line that we cut in. And then um, depending on what state you're in, or if you're a barber or not, you could use a, a straight razor and get that line, you know, and get that line really really sharp and really cut close. Uh, some states allow cosmetologists to use straight razors. Some don't. Okay, now here's a quick screenshot of my um, of my of my website. So this is what you would get access to if you went to www.howtocuthair.tv. I currently have 30, I believe 35 hair cutting videos, six beard trims with shapes, a uh, head shave, and a lot of the barbering, a lot of barbering basic videos. So um, a premium membership to 20 hours worth of material is only 19.95 a month. And the first month, which I, I apologize, I did not put on here, is $49.95. And then it's $19.95 a month thereafter. Uh, an annual membership is $199.95 a month. And then for anybody attending the webinar today, I have a library of eight DVDs. Uh, I have a new one coming out next month. And um, so if you use the code on the right there, A-H-P-M-E-N, you can get 25% uh, off any of the DVDs. So if you're if you like the um, if you like the webinar today and you want to learn more about these techniques, I have uh, plenty of information there. I also have um, a free I also have a free membership available as well, uh, which gives you access to two or three videos if you wanted to try it out first before you committed to a membership. That's available to you there as well. And um, at this point. If uh, Jenny is uh, still there, I'd like to open it up to uh, to some questions. Yes, perfect timing. Um, I just got a question from somebody. I believe what they're asking is, does New York State allow cosmetologists to use straight razors? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. New, um, a cosmetologist in New York State can do anything a barber can do, including um, uh, face shave, head shave, shave the back, and shave the back of the neck. And that's actually pretty rare. I think most states actually separate a barber license from a cosmetology license um, specifically for that reason. So I think New York yeah. State's one of the only that does it that way. Yes, I I, uh, I agree with you there. There's uh, very few other states. Um, a, a lot what a lot of states will do if you have a cosmetology license and want to get your barber's license, they'll have a shortened barber program. Um, whereas if it's usually a thousand, twelve hundred, fifteen hundred hours, it might be three or four hundred hours. It might just be an add-on. Uh, New York State doesn't have that. Perfect. Yeah, I have heard of those. Um, they call them sometimes crossover programs. So. Yes. All right. A few more questions just rolled in. Are there Great. certain men's cuts that you would cut in vertical sections on the top versus horizontal sections? Um, I'm really comfortable with I'm really comfortable with um, 
the horizontal sections. What I what I will do, and I have um, on my next TVT, I have a long men's layer cut coming out. Um, when I blend, uh, and I do have a, a another haircut on my website, the 1920s um, uh, light, long men long men's layer cut. As I'm blending the top into the sides, I'll do my first section vertically at a 45 degree angle, and then at the very end, I'll pick up the top horizontally and just cut the point off, just to even off the top. So in that case, I will cut um, a portion of the top vertically. But I still like to use I still like to use my traveling guide. I always, I always like to have my previous guide um, in in my fingers, and I think that's that's another one of the main differences between barbers and um, and cosmetologists. Is generally when we pick up the hair, we don't let it go, whether it's with our fingers or with the comb. All right. The next question: disconnected, faded haircuts or excuse me, undercuts are hugely popular here. How would you establish a guide to fade from the top down? Okay, with an undercut, what I would do is I would, um, you want to have, before you start worrying about the fade, you want to have to get the top to the length where you want it. Then what I do is I I'll comb all the hair over to one side and use a large comb to hold it in place. Similarly to the way that I locked the hair and made the line in the, the side part haircut there. So I take my largest blade and cut that up to the, cut that up to the, wherever you're going to, however high you're going to cut the undercut, usually to the temple area. And leave the hair combed over. So say you were going to use a 3 8 or a 3 uh, or a number 3, then you would go down to your number 2, then you would go down to your number 1. So I would, I would reverse fade. I would fade down instead of fade up. And um, was the question how high to fade or how, how would I fade? I, I lost track. The question is just how would you establish a guide to fade from the top down? Oh, okay, yeah. So basically I would, um, you kind of have to give yourself a picture in your mind of where you want to fade, but I, I would do it the same way. Comb it over, use your largest blade, and work your way down. So, so what I wouldn't do is comb it over and say, you determine that you were going to you were going to fade it to a one blade. So comb all the hair over to one side and just go with a one blade and leave a line. I would not do that. I would start with the largest blade and finish off and finish off with the blade. Uh, say if it was a one blade and try to leave an eighth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch separation uh, each time you go down to the next blade shorter because that's what creates the fading effect. If you go just as high with each shorter blade, you're still going to wind up with the line. So you want to, so you would start with your you you start with your number three, then when you go down to your number then when you go down to your number two, leave leave an eighth of an inch in between, and then when you go down to your number one, leave another eighth of an inch between where you left off with your number two. And that way you won't have a line. Great. That's all the questions we have so far. If you have any okay. other questions, we do have a few more minutes. Um, so definitely feel free to ask those. Um, I did have somebody ask if Nevada allows uh, cosmetologists to use a straight blade, um, which I'm not sure of, and I'm not finding an answer easily on their website, of course. So I don't know. If I you know I, that. for years, for years they didn't have a barber school or a barber program. I, I know just recently they came out with a barber program, so I don't know how they handled that before. That's a good question. I would assume now, since they came out with a barber program, that um, you have to be a barber to shave like most states. But, but before the barber program came out, I'm not really sure. And it does look like Nevada actually has a separate barber board from a cosmetology board. They definitely okay. do. Okay. So I would assume that the answer is uh, that cosmetologists probably can't use straight razors there. Yeah, I would say if anybody is unsure, you know, call, call your call your Department of State um, or your your local cosmetology board, and um, they would definitely have an answer for you. Absolutely. 
All right. Well, I guess we should go ahead and um, if you wouldn't mind just advancing to the last slide, Greg, I can go over that. Um, if you have any questions, feel free, feel free to type those in. All right. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, I am from Associated Hair Professionals, and we sponsored this webinar. Um, we're actually a national association for hairstylists, barbers, and nail professionals. And um, we offer a lot of different benefits that come with membership in our association. Um, so as you experience today, we look to connect you to educational experiences. Um, typically, our focus is actually more on the business side. Um, but we wanted to include a technique webinar so that you could really get your hands dirty with this and learn some new techniques. Um, but most of our stuff revolves around business because, as Greg said, you want to make more money and stay in, in, in the profession. So um, as a member of ours, you actually get a free website. So we have these fabulously designed templates that you can choose from. You can customize them. You can add as many pages as you want to the website. You can add video to them. You can link them to your social media profiles. It's a really flexible website that's a really great tool. just helps you build your online presence so clients can find you. We also offer marketing resources, um, so educational webinars like this that focus um, on how to use social media to build your business, how to go back to the basics of building your clientele, how to really build your book with some of those marketing techniques. Uh, we also give you access to discounted printing on marketing materials so that you can have your service menus and your business cards. Um, so we can help you find some of those things. Uh, we also have a discount program. So if you want to buy new shears, we actually have a discount 30% off of any shears through Shark Fin's website as a member of ours. Uh, we also save you money on cell phone service uh, through Verizon, for instance, is a 15% discount. If you want to do credit card processing, um, we can actually help you get the machinery either on your phone, get the app, or you can order a machine in your um, salon or your shop. We can actually help save on processing fees. Uh, we also have discounts on everything from travel to industry publications to office supplies to shoes, all sorts of really good stuff. And then one of the things we're most well known for is liability insurance. And that's designed to protect you from client lawsuits. So if a client says that while you were doing uh, the clipper cut on them, you actually nicked their head and they got an infection, um, and they want to recover the money for their medical bills, you would carry a liability policy to protect you in that scenario. So uh, we do include that um, policy in our membership. And every member gets that. And we do have several levels of membership. So if you're a licensed professional, you can join our association at $179 a year. If you're an instructor, you get a little bit of a discount at $159 a year. And if you're a student, you can also join for $45 a year. Uh, so for a fabulous um, liability insurance policy alone, um, you're going to spend at least twice that much money. If you look elsewhere, uh, we just did a competitive analysis. And um, definitely look at us if you're considering uh, even just the liability insurance policy alone. So if you have any questions about membership, feel free to hop on our website at insuringstyle.com. We also have a call center, and you can get all your questions answered at 1-800-575-4642. Uh, so we did have one more question roll in, Greg. Um, so right. Somebody said, would you recommend going to barber school if I already have my cosmetology license? Would the additional techniques be worth learning? Well, I mean, it, dep it depends on how comfortable you are with um, men's hair cutting now. So and if the answer is not very comfortable, you're going to have to seek out some form of education for your men's cutting. And that would also depend on the whole straight razor issue that we would, that we talked about. Um, you know, if you're licensed to do it as a college cosmetologist, if not, if you're interested in doing shaves and head shaves, because I know one of the services we offer in our barber shops is a hot lather neck shave after the haircut, which is extremely popular, and um, but that's something that you can offer that somebody else can't. It's putting yourself at a different level, so that would be something you would probably have to attend a, a barber school for. And if you are in one of the states that they have. Um, 
you know, one of those add-on programs, I would say it's pretty much a no-brainer to be dual licensed and to only have to, you know, go for three or four hundred more hours. It's definitely, it's definitely worth it. But if you're not comfortable with your men's hair cutting, um, I would, I would absolutely do, I would absolutely do something. Either seek somebody out that in your area that can, you know, help train you, or, 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 or go to barber school. All right. Well, it looks like that was the last question. So it is actually right on the dot at an hour. So perfect timing. Nice job, Greg. All right. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for a great webinar. And for those of you who are still logged on, I will go ahead and sign off. And um, once I do that, it's going to pull up a survey on your end. Please take a minute to fill out that survey. We do read those, um, and we take that information and um, integrate it moving forward. So please take time to do that. Thank you again, Greg, for a wonderful webinar. It was um, great. We've got lots of people sending in comments right now that it was uh, very easy to understand, that it was a great review, lots of really good tips. So. Awesome. Yes. All right. Well, thanks so much, and everybody have a great day. You too. Bye. Bye.